Hey there guys, what's going on? So as the days get longer and the lights get brighter, there's a feeling of gradually increasing optimism going around in the air as we get closer and closer to this little thing we call summer. Hard to say exactly what that'll bring at this point, but we can only hope it makes for a nice bulk of 2013. But one thing we do know for sure is that with the passage of time comes more good videos and reviews here at This Dog Ate My Vlogs. And now that it's March, I can definitely guarantee some really good ones starting right here. You see, today we're going to delve deep down into the introspective universe of folk music and target arguably one of the greatest lyricists in the genre today, who just happens to have a brand new release. This is coverage of Josh Ritter and his brand new album, The Beast and Its Tracks. Enjoy. I know where the nightmares sleep On what fodder do they feed For two long weeks I stayed away Until I saw one cross your face So Josh Ritter, whom I've discussed here in detail before with his Bringing in the Darlings EP, is a 36-year-old songwriter from Moscow, Idaho. He began his fascination with music in his early teens after hearing his parents' copy of Bob Dylan's album Nashville Skyline, and after an unsuccessful attempt at writing songs via lute, moved forward onto the guitar. By 21, his initial attempt to study neuroscience had changed into a study of folk music and the recording of his official self-titled debut album. Ritter then proceeded to move around the United States, working odd jobs and playing open mic nights in order to gain exposure for his music, until he was noticed by Irishman Glenn Hansard and his band The Frames. Josh then returned with them to Hansard's native land and began playing around that area until his album and music really began to take off. It was at this point he knew he'd be able to support himself full-time simply through his music, and his career only went further and further upward from there. Since then, his self-titled effort has been followed by 2000's Golden Age of Radio, 2003's Hello Starling, 2006's The Animal Years, which has been particularly well received as a Ritter classic, and onward from there. All told, he's put out six prior studio albums, eight EPs, some only available internationally, four live works, as well as his first book as a burgeoning author. These days, he tends to tour with the Royal City Band, and of course, release a new album this particular week. So, there's that. And, as I just pointed out, so we have at last reached the week of the newly released The Beast and Its Tracks. I'm not exactly sure where expectation lies with this one for the rest of the world, but I know I was pretty excited about it, and it was a review I was looking forward to doing the last couple of months. And, it is here at last, so finally we can do some talking at length about it. Hopefully you'll have as much fun listening to this as I did making it. Here's my review of Josh Ritter and The Beast and Its Tracks. Can't pretend that all is well It's like I'm haunted by a ghost There are times I cannot speak your name For the catching in my throat There are things I will not sing For the sting of sour notes I feel like a miser I feel low Beginning with Brief Opener Third Arm, there are immediately a few things to take note of. One, that it's comforting to see Ritter returning to a more stripped down and laid back approach that allows his lyricism's full clearance, as with the brilliant The Animal Years, and two, the very words themselves. The Beast in his tracks is of course largely inspired by Ritter's divorce from fellow musician Don Landis, and with that thought in mind, it's interesting to note how he relates the stories of breakup, sadness, and the ability to find the silver lining eventually waiting upon the other side. Ritter really never seems as though he's all that tempted to spout venom in his prose. Sure, the dreaded heartbreak and the sadness of figuring out how to move on are there, as with Hopeful and Nightmares, but it all seems very gentle in its observance. There are moments with a few jabs, such as if you're sad and you're lonesome and you got nobody true, I'd be lying if I said that didn't make me happy too, but nothing about this record gets too caught up in petty resentment. If anything, it's a lot more like some kind of novel dreamt with all the pieces scattered out of place, and at the end lies something rife with hopeful possibility. There's a journey that must be taken to get there, of course, but Ritter handles it with a great deal of composure while spilling forth his tales. He moves through all these rooms in the house that is the state of mind, and is a lot like Bob Dylan in how he lets his words speak instead of just letting outward emotions be a dominating influence. And while that might not seem like enough to get the meaning across, Ritter has the words to say it all. While I'm not going to get into the Animal Years comparisons, or God forbid Dylan ones, the beast in its track stands sweetly and strong and capable all on its own here. Where's the queen of my parade? She ain't coming back. Only thing she left me is this apple blossom rag. 
It almost seems strange to say a word such as sweetly to describe a record centering around a divorce and its fallout, but that's just what Josh does. His voice feels like this comforting blanket of familiarity that guards against the cold weather storming and blowing around outside, and leave it to this soft tenderness to be able to break your heart and save you from it all at once. It may not have much in the way of frills, but the beast in his tracks is just what it is, which is a folk record that excels. This is the kind of music Ritter is perfect for, and while trips outside the box are appreciated and are of course necessary, it's really nice to hear him returning to what works so well. My favorites from this one are the well-meant salutations of Joy to You Baby, the less graciously intended ones in New Lover, the kitchen table strummed heartache of Apple Blossom Rag, and the pretty glow of slight morbidity that is Nightmares. It's obvious that Josh Ritter went through quite a lot in the process leading up to this record, but at the end of the day it's nice to see there's some sunshine in the beast in its tracks in addition to the rain and storm clouds that may be. This is a very solid record and already may be one of the best in its genre that 2013 has to offer. I give the beast in its tracks an 8.7 out of 10. I go to the parties, throw my hands in the air, I drink what they pour me, the cups of who cares, go up in the night sky, up in the clouds, fly over the houses. So that's it, and that's all for me here today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this latest review, and we'll be tuning in for plenty more here, since, of course, there will be lots and lots more to offer here on my channel. 2013 is still looking like a big year to come, and in my mind, I don't think we've even begun to breach beneath the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the major stuff that's still to arrive. But, as always, and until the next installment, folks, keep your music flowing and your vinyl spinning. I will see you all very, very soon. Tonight. in the graveyard